Hey guys, Mike here from Panther Hollow Sporting Optics. I hope this video finds you well. Today we're out here looking at uh, my FTR. This is a 308. It has a March X High Master scope on it. It's a bad action, Bart line barrel with a McMillan stock. Um, it's a great build. It was chambered for me by Aries Custom Rifles out of Jeff City, Missouri. The guy's easy to get along with. He does a great job. And uh, so far, so good. We're out here testing at 300 yards. I gather my data at 100 normally, like with a magneto speed, get my speeds that I desire. And then I will start messing with uh, neck tension and seating depth to get the groups that I want at 300 yards. What I'm looking for is groups that are, you know, an inch or under at 300. That will put me in a competitive playing field, okay? And put me to the top of the class if I do my job reading the wind. And that's what it comes down to is reading the wind. No tuner, okay, no tuner is ever gonna help you read the wind. Tuners are just a variable. Um, I don't care what anybody says, that's what it is. It's a variable and it's a variable that I do not wish to spend money on. I would rather do it the way I've been doing it, which is load for the barrel, set the seating depth neck tension, and then as the conditions change as we go through the seasons, I'll adapt the load for that. It seems to be more reliable than depending on than depending on a tuner to do that for you. And on the and also on another note, tuners do not tune stiff barrels very well. They just don't. It, it makes sense. It's a stiffer barrel, has less harmonics, there's less to tune. Now a smaller Thinner profile barrel, a tuner would probably be okay on, especially on a hunting rifle or something like that. And guys that are giving me a hard time about a tuner, you heard what I said. On a smaller hunting rifle, it would probably work just fine. On a big heavy rifle with a heavy barrel, I don't see the tuner being an advantage of any way. I see it being more of a rabbit hole to spend more time and money on. I mean, the daggum things aren't cheap. I'd rather spend that time and money in ammo for the rifle and tune it the right way and not worry about some black box sticking on the end of my rifle, okay? That's just my two cents. The other thing is, if you're gonna leave a comment, um, leave a comment, and if you wanna tell me about a product you use or an experience with a product, make sure you have experience with that product. I had a guy get a hold of me, talk to me about a tuner, and turns out he didn't even own one. He was telling me how to use a tuner, and he didn't even own a tuner. Had never used a tuner, but he knew how to use it, right? <laughs> I hear that in scopes all the time. I just think it's kind of funny. I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about that stuff. This is a March scope. March X. This is a high master scope. Now then, I don't do video through the scope uh, I'm, because videoing through a scope only shows you the quality of your camera. Okay, if you notice a lot of times when guys take videos through scopes, they don't zoom it up on high power. I get asked that question all the time. I am not Joe Rhea from Cyclops, okay? Um, I'm not gonna come out here and try to find the best lighting conditions to, to take video through a scope. I'm not that guy. I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna shoot and I'm probably gonna pick crappy conditions because I wanna learn something, okay? That's what I do. Joe does his thing, I do my thing. I've also been asked to critique other YouTube channels. <laughs> that actually sounds kind of fun because um, I get critiqued all the time uh, by whoever and I think it's a blast. I like the camaraderie, it doesn't bother me a bit. If you watch Joe's last video, he actually went on a little bitch rant about somebody contradicting something. Or no, he said, he asked, a viewer had asked if it bothered him if somebody contradicted information that he was putting out. People are going to do that. Um, I have nothing against Joe. I think he's a great dude. Um, he spends a lot of time on a bench with a 22 at 50 yards. Have not, There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't tell if a scope repeats to zero within a tenth at 50 yards. I, I, I made a video about it. Maybe that's what he's, what he's talking about. I have no idea. Don't care. 
it doesn't bother me. I do videos so that I can learn, so I learn something, I'll show you guys. And hopefully you're learning along with me. I don't know everything and don't have all the answers, okay? But I do practice a lot, I do shoot a lot, and I do try to have a lot of fun while shooting, okay? And the best way to learn is to shoot in conditions that suck. That's the best way to learn. Who wants to shoot on an absolutely perfect day? I mean, you can do that, and there's, but there's not very many, not very many perfect days to shoot on. Right now, we got a left to right wind that's probably five to eight miles an hour. With this load, okay, at 300 yards, there's going to be some left to right. There just is. It doesn't. A 308 doesn't buck the wind that well. That's what makes a 308 so challenging to shoot and so much fun to shoot. Okay, same with a 22. The wind really affects the 22. And if you get right down to it and the nuts and bolts of it, you would have to shoot in a tunnel, okay, to test the repeatability of a scope at 50 yards, okay? Because a 22, especially if you don't lot test, a 22 is no way to test a scope. Joe, I'm not picking on you. I'm just telling you the truth, dude. You like search, you like searching the truth. I'm telling you the truth. That that's that's the way it is. It it doesn't work that way. I've, I've tried it and tried it and tried it. Sometimes I'll see something on YouTube and I'll be like, I'm going to try, give that a try. And then come out and find out that, oh, well, that didn't work too well. Maybe they maybe they didn't know what they was talking about. I don't know. I'm not picking on you. I'm not picking on you. It sounds like it, but I'm not, man. I love you. I think you're a great guy. Uh, but there's some stuff that, you know, that's a little bit misleading. Anyways, we're going to fire a few shots here. We're going to watch this thing recoil. We're gonna go down range and I've already shot some some uh, groups already. We're gonna go check it out and see what it looks like. Guys, that bad action is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I had a guy send me a message and asked me about uh, asked me about told me that defiance action suck. Well, Maybe he had some bad actions, I have no idea. But the defiances I've had have been awesome. I absolutely, I've got three of them, I like them, I like them a lot. I've got a couple Kroger actions I really like. And I've got some Evo 2s I like a lot because of the price and because of how good they feel and how well they're machined. Um, I'm gonna have a GT made up in an Evo 2 and I'm gonna use it for my Varmint Tactical build. Um, I've shot my other GT out, it's dead. It lasted just a skosh over 3,200 rounds. I had chunks of rifling missing out of that barrel. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of the lifespan of a 6GT. It's not 1,500 like everybody says or 2,000 rounds. I got, maybe I had a special barrel. <laughs> maybe it was really special. But it lasted 3,200 plus rounds. I don't know exact count, okay, because I quit counting after 3200 and I've put a few rounds I've had actually a match since then and I've watched the I watched it consistently from a clean barrel shoot really tight barrels the 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 group spread apart more and then it spread apart more looked like a shotgun blast at 600 yards and that wasn't me it was it was the freaking barrel um, anyways we got a pretty good win now and let's see what these loads do here it's just we're just gonna watch the recoil of the rifle is what we're gonna do we're all level Nice and level here. Get on a pick us a dot. There's one. Let's see where this bullet goes. That was a pretty good wind call. That went right in the middle of that dot. This action is nice. You notice me breaking my cheek well. Um, I know exactly where my cheek needs to go on this rifle. Um, at 20 foul off land, I've got three and a little clover leaf out there at 300 yards. That one dropped low. 
kind of little variance there. You, you're looking for flyers when you do this stuff. Yeah. Three of them shot really good, then I had some flyers. And that, that's what you see sometimes, and that's why you do load development. So, um, we're gonna go down there and look at those and see what it looks like. Stand by. Okay guys, the load data for this is Peterson Brass, small rifle primer, CCI 400 primer, 42.8 grains of Varget, a 185 juggernaut, I tested the neck tension at 335, 0.335, and 0.337. I also tested with no neck tension and various lengths, okay? So we're gonna keep on testing. I'm gonna to try to tighten it up a little bit more at 300. The more I can make this rifle forgiving, the better it will be, okay? Now that low data, you obviously need to test your own rifle. Don't just take that low data, load it, and expect your rifle to shoot like this very doubtful it's going to happen and get lucky and it might happen that is a bart line 5r barrel okay um anyways guys i appreciate you watching don't forget to like share subscribe and we'll see you in the next video